The FC disk module calculates the fault current distribution in multiple terminals, transmission lines, and distribution feeders using minimal information and a simple set of data concerning the network. Important quantities that can be calculated by FC disks include the current division factor, or split factor, which is described in the IEEE standard, the current distribution along shield wires, neutral wires, cable shields, and similar metallic paths, as well as grounding grids and towers, and grid and tower potentials. The values can ultimately be applied for accurate safety analyses and to ensure that your grounding grid design, while safe, is also not overly conservative and costly with respect to your design objectives. The model of a transmission line network consists of three basic elements. A central site, which typically represents the location where a fault occurs, for example, a faulted substation. Our model must take into account the ground impedance of the central site, as well as the ground impedance of our terminal stations. Every model must have at least one terminal. These terminals are typically substations that are connected to the central site. Each terminal is a current source energizing the transmission line. That current will be flowing to the central site when a fault occurs, so our model will need to take into account the fault current, that is to say, the energization for each terminal. Let's summarize this graphically. This is a simplified circuit diagram of a power transmission system. The central site of our model represents the location where a fault happens, whether that be a tower or a substation. The terminals of our model represent substations that are connected to the central site by a transmission line. The terminals are considered to be the sources of fault current. In our model, each transmission line is comprised of one or more blocks, where a block is comprised of sections, commonly called spans, that are all of the same length. There are typically multiple terminals in a system, and with fc disks you can model as many terminals as required for a realistic simulation. Now let's create a project. When you installed CDEGS, an SCS software folder was created on your desktop. Double-click this folder, and then double-click on the CDEGS icon to launch the program. In the Working Directory field, you can enter or browse to the location where your work will be saved. In the Current Job ID field, enter the job ID of your file. The Modules tab of CDEG contains a button for every computation module in the CDEG suite of software, including, of course, FC Dist. So we're going to start by clicking on the FC Dist button and then select a specify session. When we do this, the FC Dist main screen will appear. You'll start setting up your case by first selecting an appropriate system of units, either metric or imperial. By clicking on the Edit Comments button, you can type a description of the study for future reference. Then begin specifying your system. You will input the average soil characteristics and the working frequency. The name of the central site can be customized, and most importantly, its grid impedance must be defined. This can be done in more than one way, depending on your workflow and, if applicable, other CDEX programs that you may have used to compute the impedance of the grounding grid that is part of your FCDIS project. For example, if you previously used MALT to compute the resistance of your grounding grid, then MALT would have created a file with an F11 extension. This is called a share file, and FC disk would be able to use the resistance value in that share file. Or, if you previously computed the impedance of your grid with MALS or HIFREC, then you can manually enter that grid impedance value here. Another option, and this is what we'll do in this video, is to simply use the default impedance value, which is 1 ohm. Now we can start defining the electric network by adding terminals that will be connected to the central site. Click on the Add Terminal button. In the dialog box that appears, assign a name to the terminal. You'll notice in this table that there is a column with the header block name. Now, between the central site and every terminal, there can be one or more block. In a given block, the characteristics of a line are considered to be identical. So, for example, in the case of a transmission line, the distance between the towers, in other words, the span length, will be the same in any given block. The line parameters will also be the same. Blocks can be declared either here in the Add Terminal screen, or we'll have the option of adding blocks from another screen that we'll see in just a moment. But before moving ahead to that screen, we will note that for every block we must specify one of the six configuration types. For this tutorial, we're going to keep things simple, and there will be just a single block between the central site and each terminal. For the configuration type of this block, we are selecting Overhead Transmission Line with one shield wire. Now let's click Edit Terminal to bring up the other screen we mentioned a moment ago. It is in this screen that we will specify the overhead transmission line of the terminal that we just added to our system. The screen contains an image representing the transmission line system for this terminal and multiple data fields, each of which must be populated with a value. 
you will also notice two tabs, one called Fold Network, which is the active tab, and a second tab called Block 1. In this Full Network tab screen, there is a Terminal Ground Impedance section, and this is where we will specify a ground impedance for the terminal. We'll keep it at the default value. The Fault Current section, of course, is where you specify the fault current for this terminal, and by toggling this connection here, you can specify the connection status of the shield wire to the terminal grounding system. If we needed to, we could divide the overhead transmission line system for this terminal into as many blocks as necessary from this screen. New blocks are defined in this data grid, appropriately named Define Number and Configuration Type of Blocks. As noted earlier, a configuration type must be assigned to each block. Now for this tutorial, we're only going to have a single block per terminal, but we'll just quickly show that new blocks can be added with the Add Block or Copy Block buttons. And when this occurs, a tab with the new block's name is created, and in that new tab, we would specify the block's characteristics. For example, you can specify the characteristics and location of the shield wire for the block, either by entering the values manually, or by importing a conductor from SCS Library, which comes up when we click the Import from DB button. There's another video tutorial for SCS Library, so we're not going to go into a lot of detail about how SCS Library is used. But we'll just note that searching for the right conductor can be greatly facilitated if you know the type of conductor you're looking for and the class of that conductor. Then you can use that information to refine your search. You must also specify the location of the faulted phase wire, the average span length, and the total number of sections, or in other words, in this transmission line context, the total number of spans. When we finish specifying the terminal, we click OK, which returns us to the main screen. It is often the case that different terminals in a system have a similar configuration, and in such cases, we can use the Copy Terminal feature to speed up data entry. If there is some data that is not identical, we can select the Edit Terminal button to modify values corresponding to the dissimilar aspects, say, for example, the magnitude of the fault current. Additional terminals can be added by clicking on either the Add Terminal or Copy Terminal buttons. When all terminals have been specified, click the Save Session button to save your project and then click the Process button to run the case. When the run is finished, you may close the run window and then click on the View Plots and Reports button. SCS Results Viewer is the recommended output session for examining computation results from FCDIST. When you click on the Reports button, a summary report is generated in the Results Display panel, and you can find the current split factor at the end of this report. Other important quantities summarized in this report include total earth current at the central site and the return current from the central site to each terminal. From the Data Selection panel of SCS Results Viewer, you can select different quantities to plot, such as the shunt potentials, which is the potentials of the towers, as well as shunt currents, and you can plot the current flowing in shield wires by selecting the Section Current option. The results can be plotted per terminal, so here we're plotting the shunt potentials across the 120 sections from the central site to terminal number 1. And if we change the terminal number from 1 to 2 here in the Plot Terminals Detail section of the Data Selection panel, and then select Plot, we will generate the same plot, but this time for the 120 sections between the central site and terminal number 2. You can also include any two terminals in a single plot. The circuit that we just set up and plotted shunt potentials for was a very simple system. There were only two terminals, we used default settings for most values, and aside from having different fault current values, both terminals were essentially identical. If you're interested in looking at a system with more terminals and greater differences between those terminals, then you may want to check out some of the input files that are available in the Examples subfolder in your SCS software folder. To load a file specifically for SCS FC Dist, go to the Tools subfolder then the SCS FC Disk subfolder. Let's take a quick look at the file FC underscore three terminals with single shield wire .f05. As the name suggests, there are three terminals in the system that this input file represents. You're welcome to explore the configuration details for each terminal. You could do that via the Edit Terminal button, but for the purposes of this introductory video, we will simply note that the terminals are different from each other. For example, the line to the Hudson terminal has shorter span lengths, and for each of the three terminals, there are differences in the grid impedances as well as the magnitudes of their respective fault currents. Click Process to run the case. 
Our run has completed. So now we click the View Plots and Reports button to open SCS Results Viewer again, where we can see the input data for each of the three terminals and all of the computed results. For example, the split factor here in the central site portion of the report. With the first system we had looked at in this video, when we created a plot based on data from two terminals, we were basically plotting the whole system, for the system only had two terminals. When you create a two-terminal plot of a three-terminal system like this one, you'll be choosing from one of three terminal pair combinations, either terminals 1 and 2, 2 and 3, or the selection that we're making here, terminals 1 and 3. More information about FCDIST and other programs in the CDIC software suite is available in a variety of resources such as the help document, available directly from the SCS FCDIST interface by selecting the Help Topics option from the Help menu, or by simply pressing the F1 key. Our how-to engineering manuals are a popular educational resource providing step-by-step -step instructions for completing a variety of studies, several of which involve the FCDIST computation module. The SCS FCDIST interface that was prominently featured throughout the video you just watched is covered in the how-to manual entitled Simple Substation Grounding Grid Analysis. That manual is in a PDF document with the simple file name ground.pdf. You may find answers to some of your questions in the knowledge base on the SCS website. The URL for that is shown here. If your organization is a subscriber to SCS's technical support service, you'll be able to submit your questions to our team of technical support specialists. Inquiries and related files can be submitted via email to the address shown here. Contact information for every SCS location is also available on our website. Finally, SCS offers training courses and seminars for users with a variety of backgrounds in grounding and EMI, and with various levels of experience using CDIC software, and many of these courses include an option to take a certification exam. This concludes our introductory video tutorial for FCDIST. Thank you for watching.